And so that can relate to the topic I wanted to talk about now to end the show. So today, May 17th, is International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and Biphobia. So essentially, International Day Against not accepting or being against people who are not heterosexual and cisgender or um, the traditional genders that people think about. And um, I saw some people post about this and I posted on my own Instagram and wanted to talk about it tonight because so going back to this concept of accepting and taking care of, of everyone, we know that there are still many oppressed groups that we have in our current society. I talk about, about race and racism a lot uh, because we see that in, in the United States still and around the world, but also the LGBTQ community still experiences considerable amount of discrimination, even in the United States, but around the world. And so having these types of days, I know there's a lot of these international day for this, international day of the woman and that, and sometimes people can think, well, what's, why does it matter? And it's not that just having that day itself is going to change everything, but it is about bringing about awareness and talking about these things. And to me, it's heartbreaking that we have to have days like this because it's a reminder that we're not taking care of everyone, that certain individuals continue to experience strong discrimination. And um, it's not just trivial things. Well, actually, it's not even trivial for people to call you, let's say, names is actually really horrible or more subtle things that people might think happen in the United States. Serious things happen here. But sadly, um, it was brought to my attention last week that a 20-year-old uh, Iranian gay man named uh, Ali Reza Fazali Monfared was killed, and it appears he was killed by his own family members in a type of quote-unquote honor killing because they found out that he was gay. And um, when I read the story, I was just heartbroken. Even right now, it's hard to talk about the 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 situation because you see pictures of him, and he's just he's a twenty year old, and he's being himself so young, and his family to think that he was a dishonor by being who he is, born the way he is, and wanting to be himself, and that it would be honorable to kill him is just mind-boggling to me and is a reminder of how much work we still have to do. And so when we see something like this International Day against homophobia, transphobia, biphobia, it's necessary because these things are still happening. People still have to even fear, literally fear for their lives in many other countries. And this young man was just was killed and Again, to think that him just being himself was dishonorable and to kill him was honorable is so incredibly backwards that we have to really think about where we are. And I think this is why it's important for everyone, of course, if you are a member of the LGBTQ community, to, if you can, speak out on it or speak up about who you are. And I hope you can, uh, of course, be proud, but not just about you being proud, have the space to be proud to be who you are and to be yourself. Um, but even if you're not a member of that community, to be an ally, meaning that you talk about and stand up for people who are uh, members of this community because they're members of the human race. And I think it's sad that we still are trying to figure out who deserves to be taken care of, who deserves to have rights uh, in different ways when really all human beings deserve all human rights. We, we shouldn't have to, to think about it. it. It's happened so much. Even in my lifetime, I've seen discussions about gay marriage in, in the United States and in California. I think it was the 2008 election. There was something on the ballot about that that actually didn't pass. It was um, against gay marriage that, that that was actually voted for and that was just you know 12 and a half years ago um, and these things might also seem subtle people say oh marriage is not a big deal why do we have to care about that or it's not something significant but it's sending a message when we tell certain parts of our population that you can't do 
everything. You don't have all of the rights. So if someone said, oh, we want to make a law where Iranians cannot go to malls on Thursdays or can't buy this kind of property or do something, even if it was something small that wouldn't change most people's lives, I would be very against it because it's discriminating against a certain group and that's telling them that they are somehow less than other people in the group. That's where the problem lies. Not some people, you know, the jokes, oh, yeah, getting married is something bad or, you you know, people are miserable when they're married anyway, so don't, you know, they're not missing out on anything. That's not the point. The point is when we separate a certain group and say you can't do something, you don't have the right to do something, we are somehow telling them you are less than everyone else. And there's research supporting this uh, that I saw a few years ago that found that in states where they passed gay marriage, they made it legal, they saw a decrease in suicides for LGBTQ youth, which is really powerful. And they, they try to make it very um, thorough to make sure it wasn't just correlational or just random because they had some states where it was passing, some where it was not. Uh, but it makes sense because that law is somehow telling these youth, as they're maybe becoming aware of their sexuality or understanding it, that somehow, you know what, you're not quite like everyone else. You won't be able to get married, actually, because you're different. You're not okay the way you are. And, of course, people even still disown individuals who are LGBTQ. That's why we see higher rates of homelessness amongst, even in the United States, in the United States LGBTQ youth. Um, there's still those types of pressures that are going on. So just these laws changing... In a way, we're saying, and I hope in a way we, we almost are apologetic, we were wrong to not give you the rights that you deserve to have equal rights like everyone else. And of course, you are like all of us, and we, we love you. We love all of our citizens. We love our human family. And when we welcome them with open arms, that makes those youth and that makes people feel more welcomed, that I can be the way I am. I can love myself the way I am because the society loves me the way that I am. So what might seem trivial at times to some people of a law or talking about some issue, we see that it's very important, in this case, sadly, in suicide, people taking their own lives when they don't feel like they are uh, accepted. But in this case of uh, Ali Reza Monfaret, he's 20 years old. I, I, I want to say it this way. He was 20 years old because he was killed because of his sexuality. This is why these things matter. So I really do hope people will think about these things, talk about these things. In my own lifetime, I've seen progress made in so many um, ways in the United States and even in the Iranian community. Although I do feel that when I speak to families dealing with these types of issues, hear people talking in the general public, as Iranians, we still have strong prejudices against the LGBTQ community. It, it does exist in the whole world, so I don't want to single just us out that we're doing it so wrong, but we are wrong about this, to be against individuals being born the way that they are for being who they are, and there's so many ways to be. And so... When you hear people make jokes, if you hear people talking about members of the LGBTQ community, of course, if you have friends or family members who are, please make an effort to make them feel loved and supported to be who they are. And of course, if you are a member of the LGBTQ community in, in any culture, but if you're an Iranian, I hope you will reach out to others and I hope you do feel supported and loved to be who you are because people are born so many different ways and so many different things. And uh, I think I was talking before about the future and how I think people will look at things. I think this is one of the things that will change in the future. And I'm, I mean, it's already happening, but I think we'll get there someday soon where it won't even be looked at as, as something that will be such a big deal. Uh, you know, I saw something someone posted recently about coming out, coming out of the closet. And they were saying that, you know, I don't even like this term or saying that I came out of the closet because 
The closet was something that society built around me. Society told me I had something about me that I had to hide, which now I realize it's nothing for me to hide. And, and so when I read this person sharing that, it was so powerful for me because yes, society has been wrong and stupid to make people feel that they should hide their sexuality because it's different from what we think is the only way or the right way to be. We told them they should be ashamed of that. It's nothing bad about them. It's something bad about society. And as I wrote on my uh, Instagram post, if you hate any group of people, it reflects negatively on you, not on them. So if you don't like gay people and you think it makes you so whatever, you're the one that is looking bad and you're the one that's reflecting something bad about you, not that there's something bad about that group. So this day against homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia. Uh, really, and even people have talked about this word phobia. It almost sounds like it's like an illness or something they're afraid of, which they maybe should be afraid of. But really, it's about hate and not accepting and lack of tolerance. So it's not just uh, like a fear. So saying transphobia means hating trans people or not accepting trans people, not being tolerant of trans people. This isn't something that reflects good on you. It's reflecting something that's missing in you and understanding other human beings and judging them for being who they are and thinking that it should matter. But I do hope and I do imagine a future where it won't be coming out of the closet won't even be a thing because we have reached some level of acceptance and tolerance. I don't even like tolerance. I understand it has meaning because people have not always been tolerated. But tolerance is not enough. We want everyone to feel accepted and loved. I've worked with some families or seen some families that tolerate their gay son or lesbian daughter, but they don't fully accept them as in let's say, bringing their partner to a family gathering or telling other family members even about their sexual orientation. So they've tolerated them and that they haven't kicked them out fully in the family, but they haven't fully accepted them. So tolerance is an early step, but that's, of course, necessary. We should be tolerating, but loving and accepting all members of our community. So uh, I was heartbroken um, to to see, see the story about uh, Ali Reza Monfayed, who was only... 20 years old and his life was taken by his own family members um, for being gay and so this is why we have to keep talking about these issues we have to keep being allies for all human beings but today I wanted to discuss the LGBTQ community because they're still in need of support and rightfully so all human beings def deserve all human rights and all human beings deserve the right to live and we should not be uh, you know treating them in this type of negative way. So I, I was really heartbroken, wanted to bring that up today, this sad story, but I hope it will inspire all of us to continue being allies and fighting for justice and fighting for, for everyone to, to get the love and acceptance they deserve. That brings us to the end of tonight's show. As always, a big thank you to Amir here in the studio. You've been listening to In Session with Dr. Fadir Lakwi. Have a wonderful night.